So, hello. Hello. <laughs> Here we go. Do, do we give it a number? Well, this would be hash, hash one. It's a hashtag, effectively, and then one. Okay, It's fine. the American thing for number, number one. Yeah, but then if you put a hashtag next to local councils, which is our theme for the day, um, uh, uh, it's not a number. I don't quite get it. Okay. Do I need to be explained? I don't it think we really, need to we don't really need to, to get okay. into that. Okay, that's good. Fine. So we need to introduce ourselves. I'm Peter Batt. And I am Clara Gibson. And uh, what do you do? I'm a journalist, allegedly. Allegedly? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. I am actually a coach and master practitioner of NLP. Right. Okay. So I work with people to help them become, take charge of their lives, their thinking, their happiness, their health, their well being. That's a very full uh, explanation. So I'm, I feel the need to explain my Carry on. My... I think so. It's a good so, idea. Well, I'm a journalist by trade mm. uh, and I'm probably become more of a sort of a writer and commentator, and I feel the need to become more of a campaigner. Well, I think we all need to become more of campaigners. Yes. I'm afraid. And that's part of what this is about, isn't it? It certainly is. It's, you see, it's the great thing, isn't it, about helping people to know that there are, there are many things that they can do to take charge of their lives and tra to transform their world. And in the process, we might actually transform the whole world, eventually. Um, yes, that's... So a, I like you. I mean, um, aim high, why don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, when we're talking about transforming the world, I suppose what you're, you're talking about is we, we, we live more fulfilling, healthier, happier lives. Uh, uh, and from my point of view, in, a, in an economic system, which is fairer, less uh, parasitical. I totally agree. Uh, mm -hmm. And is less reliant on debt yes. and unsustainable consumption because yes, uh, the completely. environment uh, and accepting that other species have a right to exist and other habitats yes. should be protected. I completely agree. Uh, is all very oh, much I've part of to, that. I've got to disagree with you about some things though. Oh no! In order to have some arguments. Because arguments... Typical we could woman, actually... always just getting argumentative for the <laughs> sake of it. <laughs> just to get... To, because yeah. that's sort of fun, really. But anyway, uh, so we will be having some arguments. Maybe. That's sort of fun. Really. So you're just, just warning me you're going to argue with me, but you're not going to tell me about what yet. Why should I? Because actually arguments happen because they, hopefully... I mean, some people might do it just to be, you know, belligerent and have to disagree with absolutely everything, but it sort of adds sort of fuel to the debates if there are contrary views occasionally. Yes, okay, well, that I thought was the point of, of, of doing this. Of loose chat, because, yes. Because we don't necessarily um, agree on everything. No. In fact, we probably disagree on quite a lot of things, really. Maybe, yes, but also, yes, in all sorts of different ways. Not necessarily disagree, but actually, you know, not... We have different emphases and different perspectives. Yes, yes indeed. This well, that, that was... So anyways, anyway, that's yes. our introduction then. So now, because we are keep aiming to keep these to 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Right. And so 15 minutes and we've got 10 minutes and 47 seconds. On the phone that was found and returned to you by a, a, a staff, well, a worker from Thanet District Council. This morning. This no morning, less. I have to say, it's absolutely brilliant. Now, last night, because I don't know, it's a, it's a comment that I think quite a lot of people uh, make about wherever they live, that it seems to be for getting messier and messier and that people are clearing, you know, this... Well, the town, the, 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 the streets. But not just, yes, but not just here, but, I mean, for local councils all over the place, people are very often saying, you know, oh, well, you know, Ours is no better. And, um, but, so anyway, here in Ramsgate, there are a lot of us who are clearing up rubbish as we go. Um, and so last night, I, after we'd um, been out, I had um, 
called by a particular listed heritage area which has been being vandalised endlessly um, to see if the vandals were there and maybe to be tough and go and do something about it. But actually all there was was um, a fair amount of cans and bottles and rubbish, which I photographed and then picked up and carried to a bin in the park. And when I got home, I couldn't find my phone. And I realised that I'd probably accidentally dropped it into a, um, a compressor bin at the entrance to the park. So I emailed the council and asked if somebody could go and have a look. But I have a feeling that this morning it was a council worker who was going past this bin when my partner Gary rang my phone and he got the phone out of the bin. Then my partner then so, told me. So your so Gary was was ringing my phone just well, no, as the bit as the bin man was by the bin. How spooky is isn't that? Isn't that that is just amazing, isn't it? So anyway, I was on the phone here reporting my phone lost to EE, and so somebody came to the door um, in high biz yellow, um, got, having got out of a little local council. And I was just sort of wondering whether, you know, why, whether he was coming with my phone. And he did. He came with my phone. And because I was holding on to the dog to stop him from running out into the street and answering my phone, I wasn't really in the position to take the man's details. So I'm now hunting. But you see, what I love particularly about this story is that Thanet District Council so often is um, rife with bad press about, you know, it's not delivering the services. And so today we have this glorious, you know, example of the human face of, um, of service delivery. And if any organisation can, in a moment like this, get a, get a human face, then pretty much any can. Because Thanet, um, is uh, Thanet District Council is unbelievably unpopular. It's one of the first things yes. um, that I discovered talking to local people when I moved here from London yes. ten years ago. Oh, ten years ago. Yes. Yeah. Mind you, it does have a history. It goes back and back. Oh, back. yes. The history yes. goes uh, quite some way quite back. Quite some way, you know, with imprisonments and all sorts of things. Documentaries. There are documentaries. Uh, and, yes, um, you know, uh, bits of uh, fraud and corruption. Yes. And all that sort of thing. But here is, and it's one of my experiences... I have is that those at the cold face, as I call it, actually do their very, very best, even though the numbers of them are actually being dwindled and, significantly. And indeed, I think that um, I think it's all the more laudable because local authorities have had their funding attacked so comprehensively by central government since the coalition came to power in 2010 that actually working for a local authority must be one of the most miserable experiences you must can imagine. Must be, yes, absolutely. Uh, and not only are there fewer of them... Um, what, councils or council employees? Uh, council employees. Yes. Um, although there are actually fewer councils as well because some councils have been merged. But actually, yes. um, because there are so, so few of them, yes. uh, and they're actually retreating, they're not able to do as good a job, it seems to me. No, absolutely. And, and morale must be rock bottom. Oh, it must be. And it must be so awful when people can be very, very negative about which they are here. service, which they yes. are here. But then, obviously, you get lovely people who bring your phone back. And you see, the, the thing is, we don't really, we've sort of, I think we're being weaned off understanding the value of local democracy in this country. I have thought had that thought, and I, not that I like, want to agree with you, but sometimes can I just uh, offer my thoughts on this? Because I know that what you're saying about sorry, should I not interrupt? Well, you already have, so it's a bit late now. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. But I think that it's a way of uh, central government dis dis um, uh, distracting people from the real issues. Yes, but it's also a, a central government. Again, this is a sort of a central theme of particularly the Conservatives' um, 
policy agenda, but it was also similar with, with, with the previous Labour government, in that they don't trust local people and local representatives to actually make decisions for, for local people. Um, you know, we have a government which talks about freedom and efficiency and all that sort of business. Well, councils um, are not actually that inefficient. I mean, there may have been a, st a time, you know, 10, 15 years ago, when there was, you know, inefficiency or, you know, waste. You know, you get that, you get an element of waste in any large organisation. Yes, indeed. But we're now well past the point where local councils are sort of like sitting on uh, you know, um, stop st a stash of money that they can use to yes. you know, for a big Christmas party or something. <laughs> yes. Um, or trips. No, the way there and everywhere. Yeah. The way that the funding formula has ha has changed is that central government support for local councils has been slashed. Yes. And in fact, the, the government are looking at not paying councils any grant at all. For yes, indeed. In twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. And you see, this is uh, another. Uh, con contributor to, to inequality because um, it means that councils are much more dependent on the council tax, on the local yes, and richer areas are much easier to tax yep. and generally have lower need yes. than poorer areas like Thanet yes. which are not which cannot raise that much money yes. by local tax mm -hmm. but have much higher need yes. and so this is another move by the government to, it seems to me, attack um, poorer communities. Yes. And what's happening with Thanet is an example of this. Virtually every really chronically poor local authority in history has been rife with corruption and inefficiency. Um, you know, their corporate culture is always under attack. You know, they, mm -hmm. don't, they, they can't achieve the things that local people want them to. And Thanet has been an example of this for decades. Yeah. You know, and, and we need, I think, to have a much more grown up conversation about local government funding and what local authorities are actually able to do. If that was actually properly funded, it would probably become a much more effective authority which yes. people could respect. Yes. Well, yes, indeed. I mean, because I have just received and participated in a survey of 6,000 people. Um, and I don't know how many people will have sent in their surveys, but basically, with the council going to um, the the six thousand ad hoc people um, to find out what they should be cutting, and um, and how they are performing, and I mean that's not democracy, you know. That's well, it's very like limited. Focus, it's a focus group. You can't almost. have democracy without the resources to carry out what people want. And the mm -hmm. thing is, Thanet, like many authorities now, have a structural deficit of millions of pounds um, every year. Is there a council that doesn't have this? Oh, yes. I mean, again, wealthier councils, they can raise the tax that they need and they don't have the same, anything like the same sort of deficit. Although Kent County Council... Yes. Um, I'll try to bridge a £40 million pound gap in their budget for next year. Well, I, I must say, when I heard that, I was wondering where the cuts would be made. And, of course, the, most, the greatest likelihood is, sad, very sadly, is that it won't be the rich areas that are cut. Because they're the people who have, you know, the loudest, um, most articulate voices... Um, uh, uh, to raise their issues. It'll be things like social services and social care. That, that will go, and that's the ordinary... And, uh, and the people like that have most of Yes, which is awful. It is. So, anyway, this is today. This is our first it's news our first, chat. And good job you had that phone returned, because we've been, because you've been keeping us on Too schedule. Time. We're now down to 26 seconds. Yes. So I think it now only remains for us. We've not answered any questions or whatever, but we just had a chat. Yes. It just remains for us well, to say. Loosely. Loosely. <laughs> uh, uh, I think that some of the, some others might be a bit more heated or contentious, but um, und, um, we'll, we'll leave it at that for the moment. So I'm Peter Bat. Um, this uh, is Clara, I'm Clara Gibson. And until next time, which will probably be tomorrow. Yes. Bye bye. bye. bye.